Last week, we talked about steel sailboats, and in the comments, people showed a lot of interest in talking about another material entirely, something a little lighter that wouldn't sacrifice much of the strength that the steel had. So this week on Everything You Need to Know, we're talking about aluminum sailboats, or aluminium? Aluminum? Anyone who's ever been to a lakeside boat ramp knows full well that they make aluminum boats. Around the Great Lakes, at least half the boats getting launched are aluminum fishing boats, so it must be a viable material, right? Well, yes and no. There are some great reasons for aluminum, but as you move from the Great Lakes to saltier waters, you'll notice something interesting. Take Florida, for example. You're much more hard pressed to find aluminum fishing boats in like Fort Lauderdale or Miami, and much more likely to see the iconic fiberglass console boat. They're everywhere, and I do mean everywhere. There's tens of thousands of these things, and they will wake you harder than Will Smith can slap. Now we'll talk about why that is in a minute, but also of note is you don't often see many aluminum sailboats. Now I have seen one or two, but they do seem to be very rare, more rare than I like my steaks. And that's a lot. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make this whole channel possible. I want to give a big shout out to this week's newest patrons. We have Chris, Mitchell, and LM Sailing. First and foremost, what's wrong with fiberglass anyway? Why are we even looking at steel or aluminum or even ferro cement sailboats? Is this even a necessary exercise? As we discussed last week though, fiberglass is a great material, but it has a few inherent weaknesses, key amongst which is its strength. So if you're just bombing around the islands down south, avoiding collisions with uh, shipping containers that have half sunk, fiberglass really is all the rage. It's light, it's easy to build with, it's extremely easy to fix, it insulates against temperature half decently. It can be drilled and filled anytime you want to add new hardware or mount something somewhere. And you can fix imperfections with minimal skill, a bucket of epoxy, and you're good to go. It's when you decide to get off the beaten path that fiberglass starts to show its flaws. Anyone going Arctic exploring on a sailboat or doing uncharted world cruising where hitting the bottom on sharp coral is a likely scenario has to look at other materials. Now, talking about steel last week, we know it is likely the strongest thing that you can do. It's your best option. But can aluminum actually keep up with steel? We know it to be not quite as strong as steel, but it still leaps and bounds better than fiberglass. Aluminum is also isotropic, which we talked about last week, um, which means that it maintains its strength no matter which way you try to rip it apart, whereas fiberglass will always rip along the fibers. And because aluminum is lighter than steel, you do get a little bit more bang for your metal buck on the knot meter um, against all of its steel counterparts. Also on the plus side, aluminum is not as prone to rust, not as bad as steel is anyway, not by a long shot. In fact, aluminum boats are usually unpainted because they do so well against rust. So it's almost as strong as steel. It's light and therefore faster than steel. It's better at resisting rust. The price between it and steel are fairly similar to have a new boat built. So what's wrong with building a sailboat from aluminum then? Well, enough is actually wrong that I wouldn't personally want to do it. Now that's not to say it's a bad idea. In fact, most aluminum sailboat owners actually speak very highly of their choice in boat. And they greatly prefer it to fiberglass once they've owned it for a while and also to other materials. But of course, grain of salt, because most sailors do speak very highly of whatever boat they happen to own when you're talking to them. The big problem, biggest problem by far with aluminum though, is going to be corrosion, galvanic corrosion, all different sorts of corrosion. If you're into boats at all, you likely know that we use anodes on a boat. It's a bit of sacrificial sort of soft metal. Um, and it's bolted to the boat under the waterline so that the softer metal gets eaten away by corrosion. The idea is the softer metal takes the corrosion hit so the main metal parts of the boat don't have to, things like the propeller or the drive system. When the soft metal is used up, you just bolt on a new piece of soft metal and you're good to go. It's really easy. But what you may not know is that 
A softer metal often used as a sacrificial anode is actually aluminum. Now you've likely heard of zinc, but depending on how salty or unsalty the water is that you're sailing in, you might also run aluminum anodes or even magnesium anodes. I run aluminum on Lady K because of the things that I intend to do with the boat and the things I've done with the boat. So aluminum is used as a sacrificial metal, which means your anodes for your aluminum boat will need to be something softer, probably zinc. The whole galvanic corrosion thing means also that stray electrical currents can eat the aluminum of the boat and they are very efficient at doing that. Your DC electrical system needs an amazing amount of care planning and it needs to be installed perfectly and I mean perfectly. It also needs an isolation transformer to avoid sending any DC through the AC system. I was watching an interview recently with an aluminum sailboat owner who simply was moving his iridium antenna. That's the sort of cell phone internet uh, antenna that you would have on your offshore cruising boat. He was moving his iridium antenna from low on the stern rail to up on top of his arch. His whole boat is aluminum. And in moving that antenna, he managed to inadvertently introduce stray currents into the hull. Now, as a prudent aluminum sailboat owner, this man had an electrical meter set up permanently to test the hull for stray currents at all times. And he noticed the problem immediately. With that information, he was able to trace it back and figure out what happened. And he was able to correct the problem before it harmed his sailboat. So this is by far and away the scariest part for me personally with considering a metal hull of any kind, but especially aluminum. Everything needs to be done perfectly with a very high degree of care. And while I can rewire a boat, I've done many of them, it nonetheless makes me very nervous. The next consideration with aluminum is its reaction to some chemicals. And this may be something that you didn't think of when you think about aluminum boats, but aluminum tends to start pitting or developing these little pinholes when it's exposed to the wrong stuff, the wrong chemical, like stuff that leaks from the engine, like oil or gear fluid. Leaving any amount of fluids on aluminum can start to cause defects very quickly and they need to be taken care of immediately if there's a spill or something dripping. If you're the meticulous type of person when you do your oil changes, this might not be an issue, but also consider that no matter how neat and tidy you are with your oil changes, you're going to have jugs of oil and gear fluid and different things like that that you have to keep on hand. The spent oil you have that's sitting around waiting for you to find the correct place to dispose of it. I had oil, old oil, spent oil in the oil jugs sealed as best I could on Lady K for months before I could find some more to dispose of it properly. And more than once those containers would rupture or the cap would come loose and it would leak and make a big mess. Fiberglass coated with epoxy doesn't really care, but aluminum does. Now, if this does happen to, let's say you're looking at an older aluminum boat and there was such damage, there's those little pinholes that start to happen. You have to be careful because the previous owner may have opted to fix it by just epoxying over the problem, which on fiberglass would fix the problem, but it doesn't actually neutralize it with aluminum. The metal will continue to rot under the epoxy where you can no longer see it happening. It becomes really dangerous. Lastly, on the corrosion front, aluminum is also victim to corrosion from dissimilar metals. Many of you know what that means, but some of you won't because it's much less of an issue for us on our fiberglass boats. Two different metals will quickly cause corrosion between the two surfaces, especially when they're tightened down against each other. So if, for example, you wanted to mount something to an aluminum hull and you opted to use stainless steel fasteners, stainless steel bolts or stainless steel screws, which you probably would want to use. The aluminum being in tight contact with the stainless bolt will cause corrosion over time. This is why aluminum boat builders, when you look at the actual boat, they tend to weld in all the added things you need, things like cleats, uh, different fittings, everything you could ever want, they tend to weld it right onto the hull, make it out of aluminum, and then you don't have to bolt anything up because they don't want you using dissimilar metals down the road and causing corrosion on the aluminum hull. Now you may be thinking, Tim, it sounds like you're a hard no on aluminum sailboats, and I'm not. I, I truly am not. There are some amazing companies out there right now doing really big things with metal and aluminum and doing such a great job with their boats that they'll probably last for a hundred years, provided they are taken care of properly and well. 
I think if you're going Arctic cruising, for example, it's likely your best option. I'd probably pick aluminum over steel just for the weight savings and the speed of it all because it is lighter. I love the look of those extreme adventure yachts too when they're setting out to places that you wouldn't dare take a little old fiberglass boat. They're really amazing to behold and they're always outfitted really well. And they're really beautiful and I love the idea of going Arctic adventuring on a sailboat. It's, a, it's great. But in all this amazingness, it does come at a price and an ongoing price as well, not just the upfront cost, but the maintenance to properly take care of one of these boats, it's just bound to be out of my price range. Those are my thoughts, guys, not yours. That's it for this week. I will see you next time.